Greetings and welcome back to room 303 in sophomore English. We are in unit number four, which is about poetry and the study of poetics. But we're going to turn now actually to an essay, a, a work of nonfiction. I'm with you on page 704. Umberto uh, uh, um, uh, echoes how to react to familiar faces. We are, of course, back to page 700. We are working specifically now with comparing tone and mood. We, again, just to remind it, to be tone is the author's attitude toward the reader and the subject of the work. Mood the atmosphere, a general unified feeling conveyed by the details of a literary work. We wanting, we're, we're wanting to pay attention to the ways in which now um, we're going to see the same thing with Echo. We'll introduce ourselves to Echo on page 701. Notice the birth date of 1932. He is an Italian author, write that down, has a personal library of more than 30,000 volumes, a voracious reader, larger than many school libraries. He's interested in communication of every kind. At the University of Volgina, he... Um, um, teaches semantics, uh, the study of communication through signs and symbols. He also follows the information revolution with great interest. We're going to turn now to this uh, little essay, and the first thing we want to say, I hope you're reading with me on page 704, is we got to have some background information here, okay? Um, Echo, by the way, passed away in February of 2016, um, and so very, you know, very recently uh, left but left a, an important legacy. Some background information. In this essay, Echo mentions several celebrities with whom you may not be familiar. Anthony Quinn is a film actor who won two Academy Awards. Charlton Heston is another film actor who won an Academy Award for his role in the film Ben-Hur. Ch uh, Johnny Carson was the host of the nighttime talk show, The Tonight Show, for about 30 years. And finally, this name you probably do know, Oprah Winfrey, successful talk show host, produces her show, publishes a magazine, and has significant influence on public opinion. Let's turn now to this. Obviously, you have the, the face of Marilyn Monroe there across the top of the page. All right. Let's turn now to hear uh, what's going on in this essay where um, Echo humorously, write this down, humorously reflects on how in a media-dominated society it's often difficult to ascertain the effects that media have on how we interpret the world, the way that, a me that media affect us. Let's write that down. That's going to be central to the study of this little essay. All right, here we go. Enjoy this essay. How to react to familiar faces by Umberto Eco. A few months ago, as I was strolling in New York, I saw at a distance a man I knew very well heading in my direction. The trouble was that I couldn't remember his name or where I had met him. This is one of those sensations you encounter especially when, in a foreign city, you run into someone you met back home, or vice versa. A face out of context creates confusion. Still, that face was so familiar that I felt I should certainly stop, greet him, converse. Perhaps he would immediately respond, My dear Umberto, how are you? Or, were you able to do that thing you were telling me about? And I would be at a total loss. It was too late to flee. He was still looking at the opposite side of the street, but now he was beginning to turn his eyes towards me. I might as well make the first move. I would wave, and then, from his voice, his first remarks, I would try to guess his identity. We were now only a few feet from each other. I was just about to break into a broad, radiant smile, when suddenly I recognized him. It was Anthony Quinn. Naturally, I had never met him in my life, nor he me. In a thousandth of a second, I was able to check myself, and I walked past him, my eyes staring into space. 705. Afterwards, reflecting on this incident, I realized how totally normal it was. Once before, in a restaurant, I had glimpsed Charlton Heston and had felt an impulse to say hello. These faces inhabit our memory. Watching the screen, we spend so many hours with them that they are as familiar to us as our relatives, even more so. You can be a student of mass communication, debate the effects of reality, or the confusion between the real and the imagined, and expound the way some people fall permanently into this confusion. But still, you are not immune to the syndrome. And there is worse. I have received confidences from people who, appearing fairly frequently on TV, 
have been subjected to the mass media over a certain period of time. I'm not talking about Johnny Carson or Oprah Winfrey, but public figures, experts who have participated in panel discussions often enough to become recognizable. All of them complain of the same disagreeable experience. Now, as a rule, when we see someone we don't know personally, we don't stare into his or her face at length, we don't point out the person to the friend at our side, we don't speak of this person in a loud voice when he or she can overhear. Such behavior would be rude, even, if carried too far, aggressive. But the same people who would never point to a customer at a counter and remark to a friend that the man is wearing a smart tie behave quite differently with famous faces. My guinea pigs insist that at a newsstand, in the tobacconists, as they are boarding a train or entering a restaurant toilet, they encounter other things among themselves, say aloud, Look, there's X. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. It's X, I tell you. And they continue their conversation amiably while X hears them. And they don't care if he hears them. It's as if he didn't exist. Such people are confused by the fact that a protagonist of the mass media's imaginary world should abruptly enter real life. But at the same time, they behave in the presence of the real person as if he still belonged to the world of images, as if he were on a screen or in a weekly picture magazine, as if they were speaking in his absence. I might as well have grabbed Anthony Quinn by the lapel, dragged him to a phone booth, and called a friend to say, Talk about coincidence, I've run into Anthony Quinn. And you know something? He seems real. After which, I would throw Quinn aside and go on about my business. The mass media first convinced us that the imaginary was real, and now they are convincing us that the real is imaginary. And the more reality the TV screen shows us, the more cinematic our everyday world becomes. Now, this is a fascinating little essay, and let's work it out level one quickly. Notice it's kind of a three-part essay. Part one, Echo makes this observation. He's walking down the street in New York City. It's not unusual to see famous people on the streets of New York City. Many, many famous people, and of course, many famous actors live in New York City or Los Angeles, right? And so he's walking down the street, and he looks up, and he sees somebody. I know this person. I know this person. And of course, it's a famous actor. He doesn't actually know this person. He just knows this actor, right? And his instincts are immediately to want to kind of go up and start talking. I, I know you, obviously, because I've seen your movies, right? Um, part two. He makes the observation that this actually is fairly normal behavior for those of us who have been so affected by mass media. We look at people so much online, in movies, in, mu in music videos, that we somehow begin to think that we know them in some way. To see them in public can be kind of weird because our instincts are to place them quickly and then somehow feel like we know them. We don't know them, but we think that we know them. Finally, part number three is the end of the essay. And this is really where Echo's going. He's commenting on the way you guys, all of us, have been affected by mass media. So that notice on page 706, he says, such people are confused by the fact that a protagonist of the mass media's ima imaginary world should abruptly enter real life. But at the same time, they behave in the presence of the real person as if he still belonged to the world of images, as if you were on a screen or in a weekly picture magazine, as if they were speaking in his absence. Notice, he seems real, right? And then finally, the mass media first convinced us that the imaginary was real, and now they're convincing us that the real is imaginary. And the more reality the TV screen shows us, the more cinema, cine, uh, cinematic our everyday world becomes. It's as if almost we are living in the video game. We're living in the music video. And increasingly we think we know these people who are these musicians or these actors or whatever. Let's jump to 2A really quickly. What are you going to write down as a major message here? Well, obviously, the idea that we are being very heavily influenced by mass media. So much so, we live in a world of mass media. One of the ways to prove this, by the way, is I can play a song, and you immediately think of the video. You almost never think of the song alone anymore. Almost always, any music that you think of attends with a music video. You've got the picture provided for you. You know 
who those are, who those um, musicians are now in powerful ways. And because, of course, phenomena like Twitter and other kinds of social media, online media, you can follow these people as if you somehow know, and they, of course, respond back often, letting you know about their private affairs or whatever. At 2B, what do you think is the tone and the mood of an essay like this? It is intended to be somewhat humorous. It's also, though, intended to point out something kind of serious, that we are, in fact, being affected in profound ways. We are being affected by the social media that we pay attention to, we watch, we listen to it. At 3A, what is for you your favorite text about celebrity? What is it? Is it an online source? Is it a song? Uh, when you think about celebrity, and of course we know about celebrities through the mass media, I mean, we think about you know the families that are often named, the Kardashians immediately come to mind, these kinds of really high profile families, and everybody seems to want to follow them, know what's going on if you follow ball um, um, sports, you know that of course athletes are often followed and everybody pays attention to the things they're doing, not just in season but out of season. At 3B, how concerned are you about the way that our world takes so seriously celebrities so that the celebrities don't seem to have private lives very much anymore? And to what degree are you worried about your own life and your own privacy? And the fact that you don't maybe seem to have as much privacy, people always wanting to follow what you're doing, talking about you online, in online. Are you concerned about this lack of privacy and the way that social media is in fact affecting you? Well, there you go, an introduction to Echo. Maybe he's challenged you a little to think about the life you live in.